Hello there. I'm Bilchen Akupar. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Chapter 6 Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus. Ass. Oh. Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus. Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin Shelley. Chapter 16. Christ Christ Creator. Why did I live? Why in that instant did I not extinguish the spark of existence which you had so wantonly bestowed? I know not. Bear had not yet taken possession of me, my feelings were those of rage and revenge. I could with pleasure have destroyed the cottage and its inhabitants and have gutted myself with their shrieks and misery. When I came I quitted my retreat and wandered in the wood and now no longer restrained by the fear of discovery I gave in to my anguish and fearful hollings. I was like a wild beast that had broken. The tools destroying the objects that obstructed me in ranging through the wood with a stag like swiftness. But what a miserable night I passed. The cold stars shone in mockery and the bare trees waved their branches above me now and then the sweet voice of a bird burst forth amidst the universal stillness all save I were at rest. Or an enjimment I like the arch fiend bore hell within me and finding myself unsympathized with which to tear up the trees spread have again destruction around me and then to have sat down and enjoyed the ruin. But this was a luxury of sensation that could not endure I became fatigued with excessive bodily exertion and sank on the damp grass. The sick impotence of despair. There is none among the myriads of men that existed who would pity or assist me and should I feel kindness towards my enemies. Now from that moment I declared everlasting war against the species and more than all against him who had formed me and sent me forth to this insupportable misery. The sun rose, I heard the voices of men and knew that it was impossible to return to my retreat during that day. Accordingly I hid myself in some thick underwood determining to devote the ensuing hours to reflection on my situation. The pleasant sunshine and the pure of day restored me to some degree of tranquillity and when I considered what had passed at the cottage I could not help believing that I had been too hasty in my conclusions. I had certainly acted imprudently. It was apparent that my conversation had interested the father on my behalf and I was a uh, full in having exposed my person to the horror of his children. Er, Ought to have family risk though to Lacey to me and by degrees to have discovered myself to the rest of his family when they should have been prepared for my approach. What I did not believe my ears to be. I trivable, and after much consideration I resolved to return to the cottage seek the old man and by my representations win him to my party. These thoughts come me, and in the afternoon I sank into a profound sleep, but the fever of my blood did not allow me to be visited by peaceful dreams. The horrible scene of the preceding day was forever. I think before my eyes, the females were flying and then raged Felix, tearing me from his father's feet. I awoke exhausted and finding that it was already night, I crept forth from my hiding place and went in search of food. When my hunger was appeased, I directed my steps towards the one on path that connected to the cottage. All there was at peace. I crept into my hovel and remained in silent expectation of the Augustine Darwin when the family arose. That hour passed the sin. Wanted I in the heavens, but the cottages did not appear. I trembled violently, apprehending some dreadful misfortune. The inside of the cottage was dark, and I heard no motion. I cannot describe, though, agony of this suspense. 
presently two countrymen passed by, but pausing near the cottage, they entered into conversation using violent gesticulations, but I did not understand what they said as they spoke the language of the country, which differed from that of my protectors. Sin of dear, however, Felix approached with another man. I was surprised, and I knew that he had not quitted the cottage that morning and waited anxiously to discover from his discourse the meaning of these unusual appearances. G. Consider said his companion to him that you will be obliged to pay three months' rent and to lose the produce of your garden. I do not wish to take any unfair advantage and I beg therefore that you will take some days to consider of your determination. It is utterly useless, replied Felix, weeping. Never again inhabit your cottage. The life of a father is in the greatest danger owing to the dreadful circumstance that I have related. My wife and my sister will never recover from their horror. I entreat you not to reason with me any more. Take possession of your tenement and let me fly from this place. Felix trembled violently as he said this. He and his companion entered the cottage in which they remained for a few minutes and then departed. I never saw any of the family of de Lacy more. I continued for the remainder of the day in my hovel in a state of utter and stupid despair. My protectors had departed and had broken the only link that held me to the world for the first time there. Feelings of revenge and hatred filled my bosom, and I did not strive to control them, but allowing myself to be borne away by the stream, I bent my mind towards injury and death, when I thought of my friends, of the mild voice of Delay, the gentle eyes of Agatha, and the exquisite beauty of the Arabian, these thoughts vanished in a gush of to somewhat soothe me, but again when I reflected that they had burned and deserted me, anger returned, a rage of anger and unable to injure anything human, I turned my fury towards inanimate objects. The night advanced, I placed a variety of combustibles around the cottage, and after having destroyed every vestige of cultivation in the garden, I waited with forced impatience until the moon had sunk to commence my operations. As the night advanced, a fierce wind arose from the woods and quickly dispersed the clouds that had littered in the heavens, the blast tore along like a mighty avalanche and produced a kind of insanity in my spirits that burst all bounds of reason and reflection. I lighted the dry branch of a tree and danced with fury around the devoted cottage, my eyes still fixed on the western horizon, the edge of which the moon nearly touched. A part of its orb was that length it, and I left my brand, it sank, and with a loud scream I fired the straw and heath and bushes which I had collected. The wind fanned the fire, and the cottage was quickly enveloped by the flames which clung to it and licked it with their forked and destroying tongues. As soon as I was convinced that no assistance could save any part of the habitation, I quitted the scene and sought for refuge in the woods. And now, with the world before me, with Usha, I bend my steps. I resolved to fly far from the scene of my misfortunes, but to me hated and despised. Every country must be equally horrible. At length, the thought of you crossed my mind. I learned from your papers that you were my father, my creator, and to him could I apply with more fitness. Then to him who had given me life, among the lessons that Felix had bestowed upon Safai, geography had not been omitted, I had learned from. These are the relative situations of the different countries of the earth. You had mentioned Geneva as the name of your native town and towards this place I resolved to proceed. But how was I to direct myself? I knew that I must travel in a surface direction to reach my destination but the sun was my only guide. I did not know the names of the towns that I was to pass. 
through nor could I ask information from a single human being, but I did not despair. From you only could I hope for succor, Olo. Towards you I felt no sentiment but that of hatred, unfeeling. Heartless creator, you had endowed me with perceptions and passions, and then cast me forward an object for the scorn and horror of mankind. What on you only had I any claim for pity and redress, and from you I determined to seek that justice which I vainly attempted to gain from. In the other beam that wore the human form. My travels were long and the sufferings I endured intense. It was late in autumn when I quitted the district where I had so long resided. I travelled only at night, fearful of encountering the visage of a human being. Nature decayed around me and the sun became heatless. Rain and snow poured around me, my dear rivers were frozen, the surface of the earth was hard and chill and bare and I found no shelter. Well, earth. How often did I imprecate curses on the cause of my being? The wildness of my nature had fled, and all within me was turned to gall and bitterness. The nearer I approached to your habitation, the more. Deeply did I feel the spirit of revenge enkindled in my heart. So, fell and the waters were hardened, but I rested not. A few incidents now and then directed me, and I possessed a map of the country, but I often wandered wide from my path. The agony of my feelings allowed me. No respite, no incident occurred from which my rage and misery could not extract its food, but a circumstance that happened when I arrived. On the confines of Switzerland, when the sun had recovered its warmth, and the earth again began to look green, confirmed in an especial manner the bitterness sent her of my feelings. I generally rested during the day and travelled only when I was secured by night from the view of man. One morning, however, finding that my path lay through a deep wood, I ventured to continue my journey. After the sun had risen the day, which was one of the first of spring, cheered even me by the loveliness of its sunshine and the bamminess of there, I felt emotions of gentleness and pleasure that had long appeared dead revive within me. Half surprised by the novelty of these sensations, I allowed myself to be borne away by them and, forgetting my solitude and deformity, dared to be happy. Softer as Again bedewed my cheeks, and I even raised my humid eyes with thankfulness towards the blessed sun which bestowed such joy upon me. I continued to wind among the paths of the wood until I came to its boundary, which was skirted by a deep and rapid river into which many of the trees bent their branches, now bidding with the fresh spring. Here I paused, not exactly knowing what path to pursue, when I heard the sound of voice that induced me to conceal myself under the shade of a cypress. I was scarcely hid when a young girl came running towards the spot where I was concealed, laughing as if she ran from someone in sport. She continued her course along the precipitous sides of the river when suddenly her foot slipped and she fell into the rapid stream. I rushed from my hiding place and with extreme labour from the force of the current and saved her and dragged her to shore. Pierre was senseless and I endeavoured by every means in my power to restore. Animation when I was suddenly interrupted by the approach of a rustic, who was probably the person from whom she had plainly fled. Oh. Seeing me, he darted towards me and tearing the girl from my arms, hastened towards the deeper parts of the wood. I followed speedily I Hardly knew why, but when the man saw me draw near, he went a gun, which he carried, and my body and fired. I sank to the ground, and my endurer, with increased swiftness, escaped into the wood. This was then the reward of my benevolence. I had saved a human being from destruction, and as a recompense, I now arrived under the miserable pain of a wound which shattered the flesh and bone, the feelings of kindness and gentleness which I had entertained but a few moments. 
before gave place to hellish rage and gnashing of teeth, inflamed by pain, I vowed eternal hatred and vengeance to all mankind. But the agony of my wound overcame me, my pulses paused, and I fainted. For some weeks I led a miserable life in the woods and devouring to cure the wound which I had received. The ball had entered my shoulder, and I knew not whether it had remained there or passed through at any. Wait, I had no means of extracting it. My sufferings were augmented. Also by the oppressive sense of the injustice and ingratitude of their infliction. My daily bows rose for revenge. A deep and deadly revenge. Such as would alone compensate for the outrages and anguish I had. Endured. After some weeks my wind yielded and I continued my journey. The labours I endured were no longer to be alleviated by the bright sun or gentle breeze of spring. All joy was but a mockery which insulted my desolate state and made me feel more painfully that I was not made for the enjoyment of pleasure. But my toes now drew near a close and in two months from this time I reached the environs of Geneva. It was evening when I arrived and I retired to hiding place among the fields that surrounded to meditate in what manner I should apply to you. I was oppressed by fatigue and hunger and far too unhappy to enjoy the gentle breezes of evening or the prospect of the sun setting behind the stupendous mountains of Jura. At this time a slight sleep relieved me from the pain of reflection which was disturbed by the approach of a beautiful child who came running into the recess I had chosen with all the sportiveness of infancy. Suddenly, as I gazed on him, an idea seized me that this the sole creature was unprejudiced and had lived too short a time to have imbibed her of deformity. If, therefore, I could seize him and educate him as my companion and friend, I should not be so desolate in this people death. Bridged by this impulse, I seized on the boy as he passed through him towards me. As soon as he beheld my form, he placed his hands before his eyes and uttered a shrill scream. I drew his hand forcibly from his face and said, Child, what is the meaning of this? I did not intend to. Her you listen to me. He struggled violently. Let me go, he cried. Master, ugly wretch, you wish to eat me and tear me to pieces. You are no girl. Let me go, or I will tell my papa. Boy, if you ever see your father again, you must come with me. Hideous monster, let me go. My papa is a syndic. He is him. Frankenstein. He will punish you. You dare not keep me. Frankenstein, you belong then to my enemy. To him towards whom I have. Sworn eternal revenge, you shall be my first victim. The child still struggled and loaded me with epithets which carried. The spare to my heart, I grasped his door to silence him, and in a moment he laid it at my feet. I gazed on my victim, and my heart swelled with exultation and hellish. Triumph clapping my hands, I exclaimed, I too can create desolation. My enemy is not invulnerable, this death will carry despair to him, and a thousand other miseries shall torment and destroy him. As I fixed my eyes on the child, I saw something glittering on his best. I took it, it was a portrait of a most lovely woman, in spite. Of my malignity, as if and then attracted me. For a few moments, I gazed with delight on her dark eyes, fringed by deep lashes, and her lovely lips. But presently, my rage returned. I remembered that I was forever deprived of the delights that such beautiful creatures could bestow, and that she used as elements I contemplated would, in regarding me, have changed that of divine benignity to one of disgust and affright. Can you wonder that such thoughts transported me with rage? I only wanted that at that moment, instead of venting my sensations in 
exclamations and agony. I did not wish among mankind and perish in the attempt to destroy them. While I was overcome by these feelings, I left the spot where I had committed the murder and seeking a more secluded hiding place, I entered a barn which had appeared to me to be empty. A woman was sleeping on some straw. She was young, not indeed so beautiful as her. His portrait I held, but of an agreeable aspect and blooming in the loveliness of youth and health. Here, I thought, is one of those who's during parting smiles are bestowed on all but me. And then I bent over her and whispered, Awake, first, thy lover is near. He who would get his life but to in one look of affection from thine eyes, my beloved to wake. The sleep was stirred, a thrill of terror in through me. Should she indeed awake and see me and curse me and denounce the murderer? Thus, would she assuredly act if her darkened eyes opened and she beheld me? The thought was madness, it stirred the fiend within me. Not I, but she shall suffer the murder I have committed because I am forever. Rob of all that she could give me, she shall atone. The crime had. Its source in her, be hers the punishment. Thanks to the lessons of Felix and the sanguinary laws of man, I had learned now to work. This chief. I bent over her and placed the portrait securely in one of the folds of her dress. She moved again and I fled. For some days I haunted the spot where these scenes had taken place. Sometimes I went to see you, sometimes resolved to quit the world and its miseries forever. At length I wandered towards these mountains and have ranged through their immense recesses, consumed by a burning passion which you alone can gratify. We may not part until you have promised to comply with my requisition. I am alone and miserable man. One not associate with me, but one as deformed and horrible as myself. Would not deny herself to me. My companion must be of the same species and have the same defects. This being must create to be continued.